This film is for anyone who doesn't think hunters have animal welfare at the heart of what they do. Last week, Roy spotted this buck in trouble. He knows what needs to be done, but what if someone else had clocked the animal? Who would they report it to? Who would actually spend the time, effort and resources to deal with a wild fallow deer? Police? Vet? RSPCA? Unlikely. But Roy, like many other deer managers, will. What a difference a day makes. I could almost break into song. It's actually not a day, it's a couple of days. But this is exactly what we've been waiting for. And it is absolutely glorious. I mean, this is exactly what you want for the fallow rut. Primary target this morning is trying to find that buck that we saw the other day. Looking at the video, you can see probably what it was. It's, uh, horse tape, so electric fencing, that he's got wrapped around, um, all around the top of his, his antlers. Um, and unfortunately, it's, it's around his throat as well, and it looked like it was cutting in. So, um, yeah, we definitely need to try and find him. So we'll start right where the, um, our boundary uh, begins, and then we'll stalk all the way through the wood um, to where we were the other day and see if we can pick him up. What makes today even more important for Roy is that we think it's a buck we filmed before. It was two years ago when Roy called in the youngster near another rutting stand. He let it be so it could pass on its genes. Today, the best we can do for it is to try to find it before it gets hooked up and can't get free. Incredibly quiet and an incredibly different day. Perfect conditions and I thought we are just going to come strolling in. Have a beautiful easy morning. But alas, it's not worked out that way. So we're going to have to work a bit harder. I was hoping we'd be able to get away without doing hundreds of yards of crawling, but we might have to start crawling again just to try and get into the far pit. Oh, there he is, there he is. What incredible luck. so relieved that we got him. So we'll go over and just see what sort of a mess he's got himself into. But again, from a, a welfare perspective, if you see something like that, then you've got to try and get onto it. Um, because it, uh, unfortunately, I don't think it would have ended well for him. Um, and if they do get caught up like that, um, it can take a very, very long time for them to expire. So. I'll go and uh, sort him out. Just have a look at your hand. I want to see how shaky you are. Oh man, that was just like... <gasps> were you, what, were you shaking yeah, as well? Right. <laughs> it's like, there it is! <laughs> Unbelievable. He just came to it. He did. No, it was... Uh... He got the whole freaking wood and he came towards it. <laughs> no, I mean, that couldn't have played out any better. And that's, it's always the way, isn't it? I mean, just patience pays off and perseverance. Because when you get to the rutting stand, you've heard absolutely nothing. I heard the sighs from David behind me. You could you could see that he thought, uh, you know, he's got up at what four or thirty in the morning for absolutely nothing again, and he was going to go home without anything to show. So, 
Um, it's always hard when you're, when you're stalking with David. He is like a petulant child. Come on, and if, let's you, go if you see don't, him. if you don't let's please him, him. Let's move no, 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 I'm just explaining to the audience because. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh. Petulant child. <laughs> Poor old bugger. <sighs> you got yourself on a proper pickle, young man, haven't you? And so that is a fantastic result. And really, this is exactly what deer management is about. It's not only taking care of your age classes within the herd, but you're also looking out for welfare issues as well, which this is a huge welfare issue. And obviously, this is the last thing that anybody, especially a countryman, wants to see is any animal suffering. And uh, when you get the, uh, the opportunity, where well, you make the opportunities, you've just got to get, uh, get onto it and, and try and try again and, um, and hope that you can see or find the animal again and uh, as I've always said it's better to be lucky than good so I'll always take luck and today we were certainly lucky um, but looking at the state that he's got himself into not only is it wrapped around his antlers which then when he started fraying he could have got caught onto a tree or onto a fence but it's also wrapped around his face and around his throat as well so he would have unfortunately met quite a grisly end if we hadn't have found him, I think. This is the main reason that I bother bringing David out with me. So at least I've got somebody to drag for me. Come on, David. I'm going. Get you back into it, man. You should, if you kept your weight, you'd have been able to keep, you'd have been able to keep up a bit better. Now, come on. I've already done 200 metres. Oh, come on. There, look at him go. He's always smiling. I didn't He's want to um, grallock him on the rutting stand. So we've just brought him out here, so I'll do the gralic here, so just to try and create minimal disturbance so they can, the rest of the deer can carry on. And as we've dragging the buck along, you could just see that his little pizzle was prolapsed. Nobody likes to see a prolapsed pizzle. So I think what's happened there, or something, something nasty has happened there anyway. Um, so whether that injury has been sustained as a result of getting his head caught and straining, which could very well be the fact um, or he might have got his little pizzle tangled in something as well. But uh, I think we certainly did him a favour, what with being entangled all around his head and a prolapsed pizzle. I don't think I would have wanted to carry on. It's a bad day. Yeah, very, very bad day, bless him. It is a clean, efficient animal welfare job, completed with no fuss and no stress. It's what hunters do every day.